Before current modern technologies evolved, mines would just take the product they needed and leave closure to be someone else's problem. Mining is really turning its reputation around. It isn't even possible today to operate a mine without being committed to progressively reclaiming new landforms that are created. At Mount Milligan Mine, the end goals of our reclamation program are to restore wildlife habitat and promote traditional land use opportunities. Progressive reclamation builds credibility with local communities. It's good for business and it's also good for shareholders. As you mine, you're reducing the legacy potential of the site and you're setting an example. Mount Milligan is a 60,000 ton a day conventional truck and shovel mine that produces a copper gold concentrate. On any given day, you might see hundreds of workers on site working with heavy equipment, moving around rock and ore efficiently to try and produce our product. My name is Travis DeZormo. I'm the environmental superintendent at Mount Milligan. So I'm responsible for compliance, uh, for continual improvement through mitigation of impacts and for setting the vision and goals for the environmental department. My name is Daphne Hall and I'm an environmental coordinator at Mount Milligan Mine. At Mount Milligan, we have a strong and diverse team, including the longest term employees on site. Two of our team members have been here for 10 years, long before the first shovel hit the ground. The environmental team at Mount Milligan is made up of about 10 full-time staff, including environmental coordinators, advisors, and techs. Everybody has a specific role on the team and works really hard to promote environmental stewardship, as well as our commitment to progressive reclamation. A large part of my job is planning for reclamation and through community engagement, building a consensus for the end land use goals after mining so that we maximize the potential opportunities. The trials that we're embarking on here at Mount Milligan are huge. They represent a significant commitment from our team and the mine to the communities that we operate in. This also helps us to show our local communities the range of possibilities and benefits of those new landforms. With this project, we are covering a lot of ground and employing modern techniques, but more than that, we are implementing it in a very prominent, highly visible location on the mine site, the south berm of the TSF. Everyone that visits the site or even passes by on the Forest Service Road will see this work and hopefully appreciate Mount Milligan's commitment to reclaiming this landscape. I'm Sean Rappai. I work for Chucho Environmental, and I'm a restoration ecologist. We're implementing three treatments as part of this reclamation trial. These treatments are hydro seeding, rough and loose soil contouring, and water bars, all of which are being seeded and planted with native species. We plan to replicate the successes of the reclamation programs at both the Kames and Indaco mines, as they represent living laboratories that we can learn from. We are building a project that everyone is really proud of, and that will show off some of what is possible for the new landforms at the mine. Each of the techniques that we're applying has their own individual merits and has been very successful when applied in different locations. At Kames, they have reclaimed more than 500 hectares since 2008 using the rough and loose soil treatment, along with other soil bioengineering techniques such as willow wattle fences and live pole drains. At Indaco, they reclaim more than 125 hectares across 20 reclamation units from 1986 to 2012 using primarily hydro seeding with an agronomic species as well as nursery grown trees and shrubs. For the Mount Milligan mine, it is about establishing which of these methods work best under the site specific factors and conditions. Through a detailed monitoring and evaluation program, we could then determine the precise site specific factors and treatments that contribute to the success. The site itself is within the cool, subboreal spruce biogeoclimatic zone, and this information can help us to better understand the types of species that can grow here. The project site itself is the south-facing slope of the tailing storage facility. The site is perfect for a large-scale proof of concept because it provides sufficient area to do so, and it is in a very prominent spot on the mine. The native plant approach uses species that are naturally occurring in the area. This is in part why native plant species are an essential component and focus of this proof of concept trial. Native species are adapted to the local growing conditions, and wildlife are adapted to utilizing these species. Native plant restoration is perceived as being more difficult because of the key biological windows and sometimes slow growth in physiology of the plants. It takes planning, as the seedlings for planting are grown in commercial nurseries for one to two years in advance of the project. 
Ultimately, we want to understand what works here and why it works so that we can carry on and scale up the successful treatments progressively as mining continues. For me personally with this project, there is a focus on learning opportunities for our department, other departments and the local communities so that we can share in that knowledge and process. This is part of how we reinforce our strength as a local business committed to working with our people and communities. For this project, we are working to implement the rough and loose soil contouring approach to stabilize the south berm of the tailing storage facility. The rough and loose approach was pioneered by Dave Polster and has similarities to what is known as mounding in civiculture, where the goal is to create a hummock surface to promote plant growth and slow surface erosion. My name is Morgan Hustrow and I work for Chucho Environmental. I'm here at Mount Milligan Mine as a land reclamation supervisor. We have to work closely with the machine operator to ensure that what we are recommending is practical and feasible under the conditions. Success is really dependent on the language of the ecologist being translated into the language of the machine operator and then back again. The design and implementation of the contouring is an essential component of the success of this treatment. The slope ranges from 25 to 27 degrees along a 90 meter incline. We're working with a large area, 1.3 hectares for the rough and loose treatment and 5.4 hectares in all. For this project, a John Deere 300G excavator fitted with a digging bucket was used. The first move is to dig down and pull the material slightly downslope. Depending on the depth of the first pass, a second pass may be required to dig a little deeper as the depth of overburden is variable throughout the slope. On this slope, the operator is aiming to make holes that are on average 60 centimeters deep with mounds that are that tall again. The next move is to reach upslope to the very front of the hole and scrape a little loose material into the bottom of the hole. This loose material aids in creating a microsite where the environmental conditions are more favorable to plant establishment and growth. The operator is working on such a steep slope that he can't see the depth of the hole, so it is essential the supervisor and operator have developed a clear approach to communications. We communicate mostly through hand signals when digging, but if we need to have a longer conversation or rethink the strategy, we either radio or we shut down operations and have a face-to-face -face conversation. My name is Vincent Chinji. I'm with Sentara Gold. I'm the environmental advisor. The water bar channels were installed through a backblading process. The dozer accessed the site from the bottom of the access road. The water bar channel was cut horizontal to the slope to a depth of 20 to 30 centimeters. Channels are cut into the slope every three meters as the dozer worked backwards to the top of the slope. The operator would start the next pass and cut the bars into the slope in a staggered manner with an offset. The level surface of the installed water bars provides suitable growth for vegetation and also increases infiltration and reduces soil erosion. Hydro seeding is a very common practice for stabilizing newly contoured ground. It is effectively a biodegradable tack fire that binds the seed to the surface and because of its design prevents the development of rills and other erosion on the surface. It is a protective barrier that gives the seed a chance to grow. The hydro seeding mix is created by combining bags of hydro seeding mulch, the tack fire, water, and seed to a tank equipped with a large auger that blends it all together. For this trial, we had developed a specific seed formulation including fall rye in our native plant mixture. The tank is connected to a high power compressor that gives you the option of spraying the mixture through a cannon or a hose. The cannon was able to reach 25 meters up the slope, so the remaining 65 meters was covered using the hose. The hydro seeding crews worked really hard to cover the slope quickly and efficiently. The steepness of the slope definitely adds another level of difficulty to the seeding, but it is amazing to see the slope becoming increasingly green. Once we are finished creating the soil contouring, we seed the entire slope with our native seed mix. This includes slender wheatgrass, rocky mountain fescue, tufted hair grass, and northern sweet vetch. We then planted the slope with lodgepole pine, hybrid white spruce, trembling aspen, willow, sitka alder, buffalo berry, supalali, prickly wild rose, fireweed, and arctic lupin. 
In addition to this, we are trialing the establishment and growth of planted seedlings of kinnikinnik, mountain ash, birch leaves spirea, velvet leaved, and dwarf blueberry. At the end of the day, this is about reclaiming the new landforms that are made on the mine and ensuring that everybody goes home safe. I believe that everybody is genuinely concerned and interested in environment and reclamation. Our hope is that we can take this work, the knowledge and the development process to different departments and all workers at Mount Milligan so that they can in turn bring it home with them to their families to share this type of information. It's about teaching so that our teams have first-hand knowledge of how and why progressive reclamation supports our long-term and land use objectives. Through this trial, we'll develop a set of cost-effective best practices for reclamation. This is really important to us because it helps build consensus between the mine and our local communities for a long-term strategy. It's truly a collaborative approach. It isn't a few biologists just hanging out in a back room somewhere and defining what the land should look like. It's about conversation and direct communication with those communities as we work to unlock the potential of those new landforms. Now that we have these new landforms, instead of looking at them as burdens, it's about working with our communities to ask, what can these new landforms mean for you? What new opportunities can we create? Our goal is to promote cultural opportunities and other uses that otherwise wouldn't be there. These conversations are active and ongoing as we work towards developing our long-term strategy. By resolving the cost and trajectory of native plant growth and establishment in each treatment, we can resolve which method is the most effective and successful for Mount Milligan Mine moving forward. The next step for this project, once we determine which approach works best under the site-specific conditions of the Mount Milligan Mine, is to scale it up and start employing it for progressive reclamation across the mine site. Please reach out to us at Mount Milligan if you would like to know more. I would like to give a special thanks to DWB, Dutch Cho, and Chucho Environmental who are working with us to meet our lofty goals.